everyone, thanks for watching. This is Niall in New York City. So I just went to a play reading um, here in Midtown Manhattan and all my friends were at the theater, which was really awesome. So what a play reading is for you actors that don't know, it's usually a reading of a new work. So it's a new play that a writer has written. He's gotten actors to read it. They're reading it from the script, but they're, they're fully acting it. They're fully acting it. They're just not off book. So it's about the script and about hearing the script out loud, having the writer in the room to hear the script out loud for the first time in front of an audience. Tonight's writer was Richard Vettiere. He's written a million things, including The Kid's Menu, which I was in with Vincent Pastor. He's an amazing writer. Richard Vettiere, look him up. Um, I'll put his IMDb below so you can check him out. So this was in a theater in Midtown Manhattan and there were uh, actors in it that are working professional actors that you would know. And I'll put their, their IMDb links below too. And it was a really moving play. I don't want to like spoiler alert tell you all about it, um, but it was it was a a crime drama, but with immense depth. That's what I'll say. And I'll put the information if there's um, an information about it opening. I'll put that in this link later, also below. Usually, it takes quite a while to develop a play. So I've been in plays and development at the Actors Studio, which is also in Midtown Manhattan, sort of down the, the street from the theater that I was at tonight. And I was in the play development workshop, reading a role um, for two years in this play development. And that play was published, or is on its way to being published. It was a 90 page family drama. And so like one week, you know, my character would have a drug problem and the next week she would have a baby and then the next week she wouldn't have a baby because those were the rewrites. <laughs> um, I don't think she had a baby in the final script. <laughs> so there's rewrites over and over again. It's a really good exercise for an actor to do to keep sharp, keep your instrument sharp because you're constantly reading a new script. And at the actor studio in the Playwright Director's Workshop, I was an actor in the Playwrights Directors Workshop, so it's full of playwrights and directors, and they need the actors to read the script. So it's a, any, any place you can go to read a script, go and do it, because it just keeps you sharp, it keeps you good at cold reading. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm dyslexic, so I could not read out loud in front of people when I was a kid. I would get up in like elementary school, they would say, you know, it's your turn to read, and I would get up and I would shake and, stutter and have a panic attack basically because I was dyslexic and nobody knew I was dyslexic. I didn't know I was dyslexic so I could not cold read. And the way I got over my dyslexia was doing a bunch of cold readings. Now I didn't just do cold readings. Before I did the cold reading, I would arrive um, to the location. The director always gave me the script a little early because she knew that, you know, like I was dealing with dyslexia. So, you know, I would just get it like an hour before rehearsal, not like a day before. And so I would get it, print it, take it to a diner right near the theater, which the actor studio is right here in Midtown. So I would go like to the Westway Diner and then I would read the script before. So it was like not a straight cold read, um, meaning like most of the actors had never seen the script. So if you're having a, an issue where like you have a reading disability, just tell the director, tell the writer, ask for the script early. Um, it's not gonna be a problem in a reading as long as it's not a problem once you're on stage because everybody's nervous so other people are gonna trip over their lines too. It's not like it doesn't happen. Um, it's just part of the, a reading is a work in progress so it's a really great time to, to you know, get your practice in. And as long as you're fully pre prepared and like part of the solution and you're not causing more of a problem. And if, if you're still too nervous to do that, just read scripts at home out loud. And if you feel like you need an audience to do it, just put your cell phone on and tape it um, so that you can be your own audience just to get used to reading cold on camera. That will really, really help you. It took me a long time, but now I could read Shakespeare cold if I needed to. I'm still dyslexic. I'm, you don't end up not being dyslexic. It's the way my brain is wired and you know gives me really good peripheral vision, which was great when I was dancing. Um, cause you know, um, so there's a lot of great things about dyslexia. It makes me very creative. I think outside the box, if you're dyslexic, it can be your superpower. It doesn't have to be a disability, but in the area of acting, reading cold scripts is a part of your job. 
it's gonna affect every audition you do. So do something to address it. That's why I spent two years at the Actors Studio in that Playwright Director's Workshop, besides the fact that I just loved the writer and the cast and the director. They were all just so wonderful. The script was meaningful and deep. It was this family drama. It was, it was really great. So whatever you do, attack it. Attack the fear. Like, oh my God, I can't read out loud in front of people. Guess what? I couldn't either. Just take one step at a time and address it. And eventually you will, after facing that fear so many times, it, it won't affect you in the same way. It just won't, it won't have a hold on you. And um, if you need a coach, I'm here. I live in New York City, but I do coach online via Zoom. I'll link my website below so we can do Zoom coaching. And so I do in person here in New York, New York City, or if you're not in New York City or you can't get to the city, I even coach some of my students online who live here because they get last minute auditions and like, you know, they can't, they can't put it on tape until 10 p.m. at night, you know, so we do it via Zoom. Zoom is a very useful way to do audition coaching, especially on camera audition coaching. So I'm available if you need me. Thanks for tuning in. This is Niall Lynn in New York City. Live your dreams.